This is a $1000 gaming PC built for my friend. Unlike the previous build I did for my brother, which was more for productivity, this one's focused purely on gaming. I prioritized performance and stability over aesthetics for the build, but it still turned out pretty good. And I don't want to waste your time anymore, so I'll start with the parts I bought. So for the CPU, I went with the Ryzen 5 7600, which I picked up for 187 US dollars, which is about 288 Australian dollars. This CPU has 6 cores and 12 threads with a base clock of 3.8 GHz and boosts up to 5.1 GHz. It has a TDP of 65 watts and it comes with the RAID Stealth cooler. I did consider the Intel i5-13400F at the same price point, but Intel's microcode wasn't available at the time, so I went with AMD. And moving on to the GPU, I went with the Radeon RX 7700 XT, priced at 413 US dollars or 625 Australian dollars. It has 12 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM with a boost clock of up to 2599 MHz, which is a little bit higher than the reference card. Honestly, this is an easy pick over the 4060 Ti, cause it's better in rasterized gaming titles and that extra VRAM will really help in future AAA games. In terms of ray tracing, it's not far off from the 4060 Ti either. And for the motherboard, I grabbed the Gigabyte B650M Gaming Wi-Fi for 105 US dollars, which is 158 Australian dollars here. It's got two DDR5 RAM slots, which is perfect because the Ryzen 7000 series only supports two. You're also getting Wi-Fi 6, a PCIe 4, and a decent VRM setup. Nothing fancy, but it does the job without burning a hole in your wallet. As for the memory, I went with 32 gigs of Kingston Fury DDR5 at 5200 megatransfers per second which ran me 116 US dollars which is 175 Australian dollars this ram is on the QVL list so no worries about the compatibility i stuck with the 5200 speed cuz anything higher might mess the boot times and stability on the Ryzen 7000 series so i didn't want my friend to have that problem moving on to the storage i went with the crucial p3 plus a 1tb m.2 ssd priced at 62 US dollars or 93 Australian dollars. It's got read speeds up to 5000 megabytes per second and write speeds up to 3600 megabytes per second. And for the price point, I think it's pretty good. And for the power supply, I chose the Thermaltake Tough Power Grand RGB with 650 watts of power. I got it on sale for 76 US dollars, which is 116 Australian dollars. It's fully modular, 80 plus gold rated, and yeah, it's got some RGB bling to it. 650 watts is more than enough for this build, and the modular cables make life so much easier when it comes to cable management. And lastly, the case I chose is the Cooler Master CMP320 ARGB Mini Tower, which was a steal at 40 US dollars or 60 Australian dollars. I basically got this because it comes with two pre-installed ARGB fans. And I also added a 120mm exhaust fan from Thermalright for 10 US dollars, which is 15 Australian dollars. Simple, cheap, and does the job. So the total cost for the build comes to 1009 US dollars, which is 1502 Australian dollars. And this is including the 10% goods and services tax, so you don't have to worry about additional expenses. If you're looking to cut down on costs, you can always check out secondhand models on places like Facebook Marketplace because used CPUs and GPUs can work just as well as new ones with a good clean and fresh thermal paste. Alright, now it's time to get this thing built.
So everything came together without a hitch. And honestly, even if you don't like it, I'm actually proud of this build. It's clean, powerful and ready to crush some games. So I tested Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p on ultra settings without ray tracing. And as you can see, it handles 2K gaming really well. So 1080p gaming would be smooth as butter. The only thing I'd change with this build would be the CPU cooler. The stock cooler is good enough for now, but I'd definitely recommend upgrading to a beefy air cooler for the 7000 series. All in all, this is a powerful system for 1080p and 1440p gaming at a thousand bucks. So if you're living in Australia, I recommend you shop from Centercom. They have one of the cheapest prices and their shopping site shows prices including tax right off the bat, unlike other vendors like Umart, which adds a during checkout which is really annoying to be honest because you have to redo all your budget planning again. And no, this video is not sponsored. I just hope I helped you make an informed decision regarding this. Anyways, let me know in the comments below what other combinations you'd go for under this budget. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.